What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to professionally analyze the performance of our applications using a command line tool called Perf. So let us get right into it. All right, so Perf is a Linux command line tool that we can use to analyze the performance of our applications, for example, of our Python scripts. And in this video today, we're going to learn how to use Perf and why to use Perf. So why not just use the time command to track how long an application takes to solve a problem? Why should we use a tool like Perf? So first of all, as I already mentioned, Perf is a Linux command line tool. So it only works on Linux. It doesn't work on Windows natively. It doesn't work on Mac. If you want to use it on Windows, for example, you can use the Windows subsystem for Linux, but this is a Linux specific tool. Now to install it, it depends on your operating system. The best thing that you can do is you can just Google it. I think on Ubuntu based systems or on Debian based systems, you basically just have to install the Linux tools common, the Linux tools generic and the Linux tools. And then you can use backticks to provide basically uh, the result of uname dash r, which is going to be um, if I run uname dash r, you can get the version of the kernel. Uh, but this is basically what you have to install. And again, for the installation, just Google your operating system and how to install perf. And then what you can do is you can build an application. So for example, here, I can start a Python script, I'm gonna uh, make a script which tries to find prime numbers. So we're going to call this find primes let's call it find primes one py. And we're going to just implement a simple brute force approach. So we're going to have a function is prime. <clears throat> sorry, we're just going to take um, a parameter n, which is going to be a number. If n is less than or equal to one, we're going to return that it's not a prime. Otherwise, or actually not otherwise. Um, it's implicitly otherwise, because otherwise we return. Uh, but we're going to say now for i in range two up until n, we're just going to say if n is divisible by i. So if n modulo um, i is equal to zero, if there's no remainder will return false because it's divisible by i. Otherwise, at the end, uh, we just return true. Now, this is inefficient because we don't have to check all the numbers and so on. Again, the goal here is now to create a solution that maybe doesn't perform too well, then we're going to optimize it. Uh, but what we're going to do next, we're going to have a function find primes brute force. And we're going to just say, there's going to be a limit the primes we find is an empty list. And then we're going to say for n in range two up until the limit. We're going to say if the number that we're currently working with is prime, we're going to append it to primes, So primes append n. And in the end, we're going to return the primes. So very simple, nothing too complicated, just some sample code that we can use. And then I can call this find primes brute force on a limit of 50,000, for example. Now, of course, what I can do is I can just run this in PyCharm. And this should take now I'm not sure maybe 10 seconds or something, maybe five, uh, shouldn't take too long. There you go. Um, you can also, of course, print the results. Uh, to see that we actually get some numbers here, some some prime numbers. There you go, you can see all the prime numbers up until 50,000. Um, and yeah, basically, this script takes a while to execute. So of course, now we can have an optimized version of that and just compare the runtime. But I'm going to show you a third example later on, uh, which will show that just using time as a criterion is not necessarily the best metric. So first of all, how can we evaluate this now with perf? What we're going to do is we're going to open up a command line and we're going to navigate to the directory that we're currently working in. So I'm going to go to in my case, uh, this directory here. And I can zoom in a little bit. Now in my system, I have perf installed already. What we're going to do now is we're going to call the command perf stat. So perf white space stat, and then we can specify the things that we're interested in. So we can say dash E, and I can say cycles, processor cycles, CPU cycles, um, like shifting something to a register, something like this, uh, and then colon U, and then I can do another one dash E, and I can say instructions, colon U and so on, I can append some more stuff like branch, uh, branch misses or something like that. 
uh, or cache misses, whatever. And when I'm done, I can just provide the command Python three find primes py. And then the code runs and I can just wait for it to finish. And then I'm going to get uh, the statistics. So you can see I had to run this program, uh, it took 16 million or action, sorry, 16 billion CPU cycles and 80 billion instructions. That is how long it takes. It also gives you the time, but I'm going to show you again that the time is not everything here. So let's go ahead now and optimize this to see that we can actually get a uh, better, better performance here. So I can say find primes to py. And then what I can do is I can say def find primes efficient. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to specify the limit here right away. And we're going to say prime is equal to true for underscore in range limit plus one. Now the focus here is not on finding prime numbers. So I'm not going to explain necessarily all the details here. The focus is on the efficiency. So we're going to just assume all these numbers are prime in the beginning, p is going to be equal to two. And then I'm going to say while p times p so p squared basically is less than or equal to the limit. Actually, why do I have parentheses here? Uh, so while that's the case, if prime p is equal to true, we're going to say for i in range p squared limit plus one with step size p. We're going to say prime i is equal to false. And then here at the end of the loop, we're going to increase p by one. Uh, there's a name for this algorithm, I'm going to maybe show it here somewhere. Um, you're going to see what it's called. Now, you can Google it if you want to have an explanation. But basically, we're going to do the same thing here primes is equal to an empty list for p in range to limit. I'm going to say if prime p, then primes append p. And in the end, we return primes. All right, so that is now another implementation, I can go ahead and print find prime sufficient 50,000. Again, we can run this and you can see it works instantly and we get all the prime numbers as well. So you can see I run it, it's done immediately. So obviously, this is more efficient, right? Um, so let me open up a terminal again, seems like I closed it prep here in my case, go back, go to the current directory. And now we're going to run again, perf stat dash e cycles u dash e instructions, colon u, then Python three, find primes to py. Um, and in this case, it prints it. So let's remove the print statement so that we don't get all the output. Let's run this again. There you go. You can see now compared to the what was it 18 billion cycles before we now have 135 million cycles. So way faster. And also the time here shows us that it's much more efficient. Now, let me show you an example where I'm actually going to be able to get a solution quite quickly. But it's not going to be necessarily more efficient and have a better performance in terms of CPU cycles. So we're going to implement a parallel approach. This is why this is going to be faster because we parallelize it. But still the CPU cycles are going to be high because it's not an efficient implementation. So we're going to say here find primes three. And here now I'm going to say from multiprocessing import pool. And here we're going to say if uh, or not if sorry, we define a function is prime parallel. And we get a number. Uh, actually, I think that this is just the same function. So I can copy it here, we don't even have to call it parallel. Um, but that's basically the function. And then we're going to have a second function find primes parallel up until a limit. And here we're going to say just with pool as pool, we're going to say results is going to be equal to pool map and we're going to map now the function is uh, is prime. We're going to map it to the range to limit and primes. It's going to be a list comprehension. 
and it's going to be n for is prime n uh, or is prime n and then uh, in results if is prime. So basically we get the results here we have the number and if it's prime or not, if it's prime, we get it into the list, but we only have I want to have the number not whether it's prime or not because it's going to be prime. Uh, what's the problem here? Might be referenced before assignment. I don't think that this is a problem. Let's see if it produces some problems. We return to primes and then in the end we print find primes 50,000. Run this. Uh, okay, we have a problem. So what is the problem? So we have this function here. Oh, yeah, of course, I cannot just copy it because we need to also return, of course, the number itself. There you go. So now we get the same result, you can see it's faster. But in terms of CPU cycles, it's not going to be necessarily much better. If it's going to be better at all, I'm not even sure. So if I run this now, you can see it finishes quite fast. I can now go ahead run the first solution again which was the inefficient one, remember the sequential one with only one process, you can see we have now 60, uh, 16 billion cycles This is going to vary every time you run it. So if I run it again, it's going to be slightly different again, 16.8, can run it again, I'm going to get something else. 17.19. Uh, um, but when I go ahead now and run, and, and you can see the time is always like 3.9 seconds, 3.8 seconds, 3.8 seconds. If I now go and say I want to have this find primes three function evaluated here, you're going to see that the seconds are 0 0.8, but the cycles are even higher. So you can see in terms of efficiency in terms of, uh, you know, how efficient the code is, because we have multiple processes, they need to communicate and so on. This one is way worse when it comes to efficiency, it's way less efficient, even though it's faster, you can see it takes uh, much less time. And if I increase the problem size, it's probably going to be even faster, uh, relatively speaking, but you can see it's less good of a solution because it takes more instructions, or actually not more instructions, but more uh, CPU cycles. So I mean, whether that's necessarily what what you want to optimize for, but in terms of performance, that one is faster, but not more efficient when it comes to CPU cycles. And of course, the best solution here is obviously the second one, because it's just efficient code, and it's faster. But this is why you might want to use something like perf, you don't want to use necessarily just, you know, timing, timing the application, of course, you can do both. Um, first of all, you get, of course, the output here, but you can also run an additional time command, if you want to, so you get this here as well. But yeah, this is how you can analyze the performance of your applications of your Python scripts using perf. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.